rail freight is on a roll. And to explain why, it's my privilege to take you on a journey through Freight Britain, going to amazing places like this, so we can understand how rail freight operations connect in to make a difference to every single person in Great Britain every single day. Welcome to the Freight Escape. So to start my journey, I've come here to Tunstead Quarry in the Peak District, one of the most important freight routes across Great Britain. And now, right now, is a golden opportunity for freight. Because yes, it has powered us through the pandemic, keeping supplies moving for you and vital supplies moving for me and the entire country. But going forward, it's even more exciting. Because if you look at our sustainability targets, freight is the most sustainable way of transferring things across our country. And that's the only way we can move things if we're going to hit our carbon net zero targets. So I'm happy to admit, in my day job, I might not have a great conscious connection to the operations of freight, the importance of it, but I'm really excited to learn. Come on. I was keen to learn what makes this place really tick, so I met with two people who really understand freight operations. So Chris, how important is the rail service here for the quarry and the surrounding area? So, so the rail operation is now critical to our Tarmac UK supply chain, but, but especially for what we do here at Tunstead. And David, how can we improve the, serve, the rail service into the surrounding area for all of this supply? I think for Network Rail what we need to make sure of is that the, the timetable works, we can get the trains to and from their destination, any planned engineering works are consulted out so the customer knows when they can run the trains and we need to be able to make sure that the infrastructure is reliable to get the trains to and from their destination and back here for reloading for the next train. Because do we, do, do we understand as an industry how important those trains are with that aggregate? So what output do you get per train? So one of these trains is, uh, has, carries a significant amount of aggregate and, and we've built a national network connecting this site and a number of other sites but into urban centres. So these trains for instance from here will go to London, Anglia, Manchester, Leeds, Birmingham um, and, and that's to provide materials that are building big projects, so HS2, major road schemes, uh, hospital schools but are also building local infrastructure, so that might be part of people's house extensions or, or, or drives or, or, or local building projects which are really vital to communities. Great, thank you for your time and showing us around. Now, this is all about the freight escape and I swear they haven't organised it for us, but there's about to be a blast at this quarry. Do you want to come see it? Well, we are in the final moments of the blast being set off at this quarry. This is up to 100,000 tonnes of raw aggregates that's being produced. The team here have got to process this to get it off site as quickly as possible. That raw aggregate is being used for hospitals, building hospitals, schools, HS2. It is really important that we get this off and in use across the UK to make Great Britain better. So welcome back to the Freight Escape. And if you've fallen asleep, here's a horn. So I know you know that this is a class 66. It's a 66616 if you want to tick that off. But we're here with Ed Wilson, commercial director with Freightliner, to talk about how this is helping the quarry and also some of the stuff, the clever stuff they're doing for the innovation and future working. I'm really excited that you've been pushing the innovation and trying to do more. We have, we have. Uh, during the pandemic, we had a fantastic opportunity with the network quieter than, than it usually is to, uh, to use that to, uh, to trial much, much longer and heavier trains on the network. Uh, so these trains typically are 44 wagons long, yeah. 4,400 tonnes in weight, heaviest trains ever to work on the West Coast Main Line. 
and this innovation really, really helps um, rail freight compete. And it's great, I think that is still going on, but some other stuff that you can really do in terms of innovation and push the boundaries of freight? There is, um, absolutely. So just from operational innovation, this is still happening today, of course. Yeah. And we're looking at different mixes of wagons and elsewhere in the country, looking at actually consistently challenging the norms and consistently challenging the way in which we work to make rail freight more and more competitive. Ed, thank you for joining us today and taking us through this. Brilliant, thank you. I love visiting signal boxes like this one here at Peak Forest. It feels like a proper part of the working railway and it's a great opportunity to meet the team that help keep this huge operation flowing. So Malcolm, just talk to me about your role here as a signaller. Yeah, I'm a relief signaller on the Buxton area in uh, Derbyshire. One of the boxes is here at the uh, back of the Peak Forest South. Uh, yeah, I'm responsible for moving all these freight and trains, cement, aggregates out of the quarries here at Tunstead and Semex onto the network. Why is it so key to keep that freight moving? Well, we need to keep the freight moving because we've got uh, customers that we need our, uh, our, our stone and uh, aggregates that need this supply chain needs to be kept going at 24 7. So, uh, yeah, especially now we've got HS2 on stream. And what difference do you think it would make if this freight doesn't get to where it needs to on time? Well at the end of the day if we don't run these trains efficiently and on to time we're going to disrupt the supply chain and invariably the customer HS2 and various other stone and aggregate terminals aren't going to receive their uh, product and their end customer will then suffer. I, it's a pleasure to meet somebody who really gets freight and understands how it makes a difference not only here to the service but also to the the country, it's great. It's been really good to come see this tarmac operation here and you can really understand the importance of rail freight operations. Yes, for the construction industry all over the UK and big projects like HS2, but also for the local environment, taking lorries off local roads, putting it onto rail freight. But it's also been good to see the entrepreneurial spirit of Network Rail, the innovation like those jumbo trains that we've seen, it's on us to be innovational going forward, even if it does mean moving outside of our novel comfort zones. Next, we're going to Paul Talbot. Have a look how rail freight are working with Tata Steel to make a difference for the future in the way that we in Great Britain are providing steel. I can't wait to see it and the importance of rail freight in the next episode of The Freight Escape.